and the military is associated with weakness and laziness. No nation wants to be represented by an army of chubby soldiers. They want lean, mean, fighting machines. Most branches of service have extensive fat boy programs designed to teach you to eat right and exercise in a way to get your weight under control. Once in the fat boy system, failure to quickly fall into your maximum allowed weight means a quick discharge and a bus ticket home to mom and dad. I never let myself get so overweight that I was placed on the fat boy program simply because I had too much at stake. I watched as many a good warrior was unceremoniously drummed out of the service because he was too fat. My go-to trick was a week of starvation followed by two days of dehydration. I could easily lose ten pounds by this method, and as long as the scale showed less than 192 pounds, no one cared that my kidneys were screaming in pain and I had not eaten in a week. What I never really learned to do after 21 years of yo-yo dieting was to eat right. Pizza and beer were my main food groups. After turning 30, weight control became even more difficult. I tried to maintain my weight under 200 pounds and force a big loss just prior to scheduled weigh-ins. In my last couple of years, I had attained the rank of E-9 Chief Master Sergeant and was afforded the luxury of skipping mandatory weight checks. Chiefs were never on the fat boy list, but some of us made Humpty Dumpty look skinny. Uh-oh. When I retired from the Air Force in 2004 at age 39, I weighed an obese 210 pounds. Within three years... I had ballooned up to 250 pounds and developed full-fledged metabolic syndrome. I was obese with high blood pressure, high cholesterol, high triglycerides, high blood glucose, pre-diabetic, and had frequent gout attacks. My doctor's advice to eat less, move more, and stick to a low-fat diet did not help me at all. It was impossible to exercise with a foot swollen from gout, and I was ravenously hungry all the time. Finally, toying with different diets, I was able to start moving my weight downward. By avoiding processed foods, fried foods, sugar, and refined flour, I was able to finally get my weight under control. Soon I was off all my medications and exercising daily. Back on track. Early on, I had set a goal for myself of 170 pounds. It took six months of eating a whole food diet to get down to 180 pounds. Then the dreaded stall occurred. I saw 175 pounds many times, only to quickly rebound to the 180s. It was as if my body was fighting a lower weight. I had about given up on ever seeing 170 pounds when I came across the 1849 Potato Diet article. Within two weeks, I not only made my goal weight, but lost an additional six pounds. The weeks following this first potato hack saw even more weight loss of three or four pounds. There was no weight rebound, and best of all, I felt great. This experience led me to reevaluate everything I knew about weight loss and human health. I even returned to school for a master's degree in biotechnology to better understand the science behind the potato hack. How the Potato Hack Works Just like hacking computer code, potatoes can be used to hack into the code that keeps you lean and healthy. Not a complicated diet, but a simple hack, a reset for your metabolism. Here's a simple plan that can be used to lose weight and keep it off or simply to restore health to an ailing digestive system. The key component of this hack is the lowly potato. Perfectly suited to sustaining human life, the potato holds the key to resetting the way our body stores and maintains body weight by influencing inflammation, set points, and restoring key nutrients. A short-term potato-only diet has proven to be an ideal way for people to lose excess weight and keep it off long term. The potato hack works equally well for vegans and meat eaters, low carb and low fat dieters, and even for people who have never been on a diet in their entire life. The potato hack is not